Hey guys, what's happening? So, I thought I would show you uh, my way of recovering nickel metal hydrate batteries. I just got a huge eBay haul of a bunch of used RC cars and it came with extra batteries, jump packs. These are called hump packs. And these are actually 5 cell, 1.2 volt each, so 6 volts. I got four of these and I got some of these old, another like jump box batteries. I got a few of these, even off camera you can't see them. So, But uh, nickel metal hydrate batteries are very similar to NICAD batteries and also the same way you recover them. Um, they do suffer the same issues as NICAD batteries with the dendrite crystals. And the dendrite crystals are actually uh, what kill these batteries. And it blocks the flow of electrons through the batteries. So what you need to do is actually break these up. Yeah, break up the crystals either by overcharging them or zapping them. You've seen my other videos if you've been watching my channel. Um, and one of the issues too is that most smart chargers, if they don't detect voltage, they will reject the battery and fail the battery. Um, like these are, I mean, these are probably 14, 15 years old. I'm not sure, so there's probably zero volts. I'm gonna put my multimeter on them. We'll find out. Right. Uh, lithium uh, batteries are superior, in my opinion, but um, they suffer the opposite kind of thing though. So if you discharge a lithium battery below a certain uh, voltage, then it destroys the battery. Whereas with NiCad and uh, nickel metal hydrate, you um, if you don't if you charge it without it being fully discharged, it hurts the battery. All right, let me get so instead of actually trying to stick pins in there, I'm just gonna hook up my multimeter. I'm just gonna check for any sort of voltage. It doesn't make a difference if you have positive or negative at this point. I'll show up either way on my multimeter. You can see it. All right, zero. I'm suspecting. Well, actually, another another downfall of nickel metal hydrate batteries is they discharge extremely fast, like way more than any other battery. So if you leave the battery sitting there for a month, I was reading that 50% it'll discharge 50% after a month just sitting there. So a little bit on this one. Let me hush. I'll put the ones that have some a little bit on it. Just a little bit. Where's my other screen right here? Alright, so what I was saying earlier is like these smart chargers, if they don't detect any voltage, they'll just automatically fail the battery. So you gotta hook them up to like a like a dummy load or like a dummy charger, just uh something that's putting out either like with an AC adapter converted, or I actually have a bench power supply uh, right there. So I'm just going to hook it up to that, and I'm going to put a little charge on it. I might overcharge it, put it up to 12 volts, just to kind of break up those crystals, but all right, we'll see. All right, so I'm going to hook up my power supply. I have a little lead connected to it right here, uh, and that goes into like this little uh, connection for the, uh, the hump packs. I think they're either bump at hump packs, that's what it's called. All right, so that's high, 32 volt, that's way too high. This down to, I might overcharge it at 12 just to kind of shock it. But first, I'm just gonna see if this thing pulls. So I'm gonna hook this up, and I'm gonna see if this thing actually pulls any. And after this is actually the oldest one I think right here, the black one. So I'm gonna make sure the polarity is correct. All right, I'm gonna turn this up to 12 and hit them at 12 and see what happens. Just like I said, the point is to break up those crystals. So I have my glasses on. <laughs> I don't want to do this very long. I don't see that? Oh, no. There it goes. It scared me a little bit. Okay. See? Oh, yeah, well, I just want to shock them. There we go. Alright, I'm also shocking them by changing the amperage, too. Couple of these didn't have good contact, so I can figure it out this one goes. So I'm gonna cycle these things and then I'll come back, check the voltage, see if we actually gain any voltage. Yeah, this is Alright guys, remember at this point I'm not really trying to charge the batteries, I'm just trying to get these things back to life. So in the like I said, in the first phase of the of the recovery, I just want to make sure that we're um, so now we're already at four volts. I just want to, I'm looking for bad cells, bad battery packs. 
Okay, we'll start with four volts. Like I say, I only charge these for a couple seconds, not even, not even a minute. Ooh, six five volts. All right, that's in the range. So this is gonna probably take me a couple days to get this whole thing done, but yeah, by doing cycling. Okay. All right, so now I can't get to my high tech charger. And the cool thing about this high tech charger is it interfaces with my computer right here. So nickel metal hydrate charge. You can auto charge whatever you know. Um, I can cycle discharge. I'm gonna cycle this thing. Cycle, cycle count, charge this charge. Let's go four times. Charge amperage is uh, 100 milliamp. Okay. All right, we'll get it going. That's kind of what you want to do. You want it to fully charge and cycle it. Cycle one. First it charges it, then it discharges it. And that's how you recover these batteries. Like I was saying, right. the software is way cool. You know, I'll actually uh, grab it for you. Alright, uh, one of my green connections got loose, so I uh, decided to start working on this black lens. So I've done a couple cycles on it. It's actually pretty hot. Uh, Run at 2 amps. Um, so if you didn't actually have a smart charger, this is how we used to do it in the olden days. Uh, we would just basically hook up a light bulb to it. Back in the old RC days, Nike had batteries and stuff. Try that. So that's how we used to discharge them. So I'm going to manually cycle this. So if you didn't actually have like a smart charger, like this high tech charger or one of those uh, uh, Sky RCs that could actually auto cycle, then you could just see this. You could charge it, discharge it, charge it, discharge it manually. So same thing. So the more cycles that I do, the, the more the capacity increases. So let me show you this real fast. You can see it. So this time I pulled 815 milliamps. And the capacity, I believe, is I think they're different, but this one I think is about 1,400 milliamp hours. So I'm gonna keep on doing this to probably try to bring up the uh, the range. All right, so I think we'll recover three of these batteries, and I created a chart: one, two, three, four batteries here. And as you can see, I've gone through um, all of them recovered except this black one. Six, seven, it really hasn't changed that much. Whereas the other ones dramatically improved: two, fifth, fourteen. 2000. This was kind of a weird charge. I think it, there was something happened to charge. And then uh, 105, 252, 59. You know, then it went up to really high. So cycling these things definitely, uh, you know, it's the same thing with nightcaps too. Any sort of like nickel based battery. Um, I haven't given up on number one yet. So I've, since cycling won't do it, I'm going to deep discharge it. And then I'm going to zap it with some high voltage. You know, I'm going to probably turn this up to like 36 volts, hit it a few times. Then I'm going to do another cycle and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to zap this thing right now. So I have my variable power supply set to max. So 32 volts. This thing is normally 6 volt. And obviously you need to make sure the polarity is correct. I'm just going to zap. So I'm basically setting a much higher volt voltage down. Okay. This thing is totally discharged. So, like I said, the point of that is to break up the dendrite crystals that block the flow of electrons. Alright, so that's the end of this video. The zapping sometimes works. Depends on how really bad the cells are, but... So I'm up to 774. But, um... I'm going to keep on doing this, and... So, like I said, the cool thing is I was able to recover three batteries, so... Alright, so you shouldn't throw your batteries away. If you have these type of batteries and you wonder how to recover them, that's how you do it. So, alright, cool.